Hey, what's up everybody? It is Mr. Boylan. And today, what in the heck are we gonna do in this video? It's an intense one. We're gonna describe the experimental design and explain the conclusions used in the development of modern atomic theory, including Dalton's postulates, Thompson's discovery of electron properties, Rutherford's nuclear atom, and Bohr's nuclear atom. Whew, definitely a lot there. We are going to break it down a little bit. First thing we're gonna do, explain the contributions of these four old dead people, Dalton, Thompson, Rutherford, and Bohr. How do they contribute to modern atomic theory? Our understanding of the atom. Two, describe the models of the atom that these four old dead guys proposed. And then number three, identify which experiment and results led to which discovery for those same thrilling four guys. Basically, what did these guys do, Dalton, Thompson, Rutherford, and Bohr, to help us better understand the structure of the atom? All right, now before we get to those four thrilling gentlemen, let's first understand that matter is anything that has a mass and takes up space. And we take it for granted today, but all matter is made up of atoms. That understanding, however, that all matter is made up of atoms is actually a relatively new idea. So to help you better understand how we came to know and love matter as being made up of atoms, we're gonna play a round of the dating game to introduce you to some of the thrilling folks who helped us come to that conclusion. That's right, you could walk away after this video choosing one of the following contestants to help you study chemistry. Let's get things started off here with contestant Number one, likes taking long walks on the beach and studying his periodic table. Good old Democritus from the Greek Isles was a very forward thinker because he first proposed the idea that things were made up of these very small, solid, indivisible particles back in 400 BCE before Common Era. Boom, he said everything was made up these teeny tiny spheres, model of Democritus's atom. Boom. Now you might not think this is a big deal, but back in a time when folks thought things were made up of earth, fire, wind, water, powers combined. No, people had all these, what we now think are crazy ideas of what everything is made up of. But at the time, Democritus was the one who everybody thought was crazy. Let this be a lesson, be crazy. Don't fit in, brings us to contestant number two. Always carries around his chemistry textbook. Good old John Dalton brought back Democritus's idea almost 2,000 years later. That's how much time had passed before people like Dalton really started to say, hey, I think that guy was onto something. He expanded on this atomic theory, or this idea that everything was made up of atoms, with several points, or postulates. Postulate number one. All substances are composed of tiny individual particles called atoms. One. Thrilling, I know. Boom, same idea as Democritus. However, through some of his experiments, he proposed a couple more points or postulates. Postulate numero dos, he said, atoms of the same element are identical and the atoms of any one element are different from those of any other element. Postulate number three, he said atoms of different elements can be physically mixed together to form a mixture, or you can chemically combine them in simple whole number ratios to form compounds. Postulate number four. Dalton also proposed that chemical reactions occur when atoms are separated from each other, joined or rearranged in different combinations. And atoms of one element are never changed to atoms of another element as the result of a chemical reaction. Breaking bonds, forming bonds, but we aren't changing one atom into an atom of another element. Boom, Dalton's model of the atom. Small, indivisible particles, atoms. This brings us to contestant number three, likes to spend long nights in the lab. I like to call him JJ, but you can call him Joseph John. That's right, Thompson blew everybody's mind away when he said, whoa, people, you can actually get smaller than the atom. He proposed this thrilling model of the atom, known as the plum pudding model for those folks in the British Isles, or for those of us on the winning side of the pond, call it the cookie dough model. Go USA! Now, Thompson proposed this idea that you could get smaller than the atom by working with cathode rays. And he also proposed that those smaller particles were negatively charged. Now, to help you better visualize what exactly Thompson was doing, 
And how he came to understand that we do have particles smaller than the atom is he used a cathode ray and shot it at a screen that would illuminate when hit by the cathode ray. He then applied an electric field and blowing everybody's mind away, it was deflected from the negative plate. Therefore, the cathode ray must actually be made of negatively charged particles, which today we call electrons. So again, Thompson said, wait a minute, people, we can get smaller than the atom itself, can be subdivided. Dalton, you were wrong. Brings us to contestant number four. I like to call him Ernie. Good old Ernest Rutherford did some more experimentation and again revised their understanding of the structure of the atom. He performed a very famous experiment known as the gold foil experiment and concluded that the atom actually consisted of a very small region, positively charged region called the nucleus, and that those negatively charged particles that Thompson discovered were actually outside of that nucleus. So notice how our model has advanced. Solid indivisible, solid divisible, most of that mass concentrated in the nucleus, while the majority of the atom is just empty space where those negative particles hang out. Now, here's an image of the gold foil experiment. Rutherford took a source of alpha particles or positively charged particles and shot them at a very thin sheet of gold foil, only a few atoms thick. Now, he expected all of the alpha particles to shoot straight through if Thompson's model was correct. But what blew his mind is that a few of those alpha particles were deflected, some at extreme angles. And he said to himself, I'm sorry, Thompson, you are wrong. And so if you imagine a cross section of that sheet of gold foil, only a couple of atoms thick, the best way to understand the structure of the atom based on the results of his experiment was that the majority of the atom is actually just nothingness, empty space, allowing those alpha particles to move through and that the mass of the atom is actually concentrated into that nucleus, very small region of space, which is why only a few of the alpha particles were deflected. Again, experimentation, revising our understanding. Brings us to contestant number five. This guy is anything but boring. Niels Bohr took Rutherford's model one step further and theorized that those negatively charged particles discovered by Thompson actually existed in specific orbits around that positively charged nucleus discovered by Rutherford. So again, notice our model is advancing. Solid indivisible, solid divisible, most, mostly, 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 mostly empty space where those negative particles hang out. And then those negative particles existing in very specific orbits, much like planets around the sun. Now, Bohr's model of the atom was developed as he studied what's called the hydrogen emission spectrum. And as you look at your screen, there's an image of an emission spectrum. And at this point, I don't want you to get worked up over what this experiment was. At this point, I just want you to recognize that this was the experiment that Bohr was using that helped him propose this idea of electrons in orbits. Boom, Bohr model, not boring at all. Which brings us to contestants number six. We're just gonna group all these crazy haired gentlemen together. And it was these gentlemen, de Broglier, Heisenberg, and Schrodinger that contributed our understanding of the structure of the atom as we know and love it today. They more accurately describe those regions that we find the negative particles in as orbitals, which sounds very much like orbits, but has a very important difference. As you look at this model of the atom, again, it's still just empty space, which is confusing based on this model, but these regions are just there to highlight the regions of space that we find those negative particles. They aren't stuck in these circular orbits, but in these orbitals, which are three-dimensional regions of space. So as we finish up this video, you wanna think about the progression of our understanding of the structure of the atom, the gentlemen involved in that progression, and some of the experiments they performed to help us better understand the structure of the atom. And that concludes this episode of The Dating Game. It's a group of very tempting candidates. I'll leave it up to you which one you wanna invite over with parental consent to help you study chemistry with parental consent. Parents, if you're watching this video, <laughs> this is the best I could do to make this topic exciting. Fear not, none of these gentlemen are actually alive. Your children are safe.